All right, welcome back. Well, yes, that's where we start off. Is the biggest news, as you did observe. I mean, yesterday the president uh, declared state of emergency in three states. Well, let's give you this background, and we'll take it from there. The militant group known as Boko Haram is a powerful Islamist terrorist sect which has its base in Kanama in Borno State, northeastern Nigeria. The sect has been in existence since 2001, but became notorious in 2009 when it perpetrated sectarian violence, mostly in northern Nigeria. Even though the sect started out as a purely Islamic group, the present disposition of the organization is questionable. The group is not only out for non-Muslims, it's also fighting the government, as evidenced in the bombing of the United Nations complex in Abuja and other government-owned structures. We need money back. We need status. We need status. The group has also not spared some prominent Muslims, as it has attacked mosques and killed Islamic religious leaders in the past. Since then, not less than 10,000 people have been killed in various attacks spearheaded by the organization. Among them, scores of army and police personnel. The group has carried out multiple bombings in different locations in northern Nigeria, including the Nigeria police headquarters in Abuja, the Christmas Day bombing in Mandala, Niger State, and numerous gun attacks in Kano, Plateau, Gombe, and Adamawa states. While these attacks were going on, the federal government, in an effort to restore peace, considered the amnesty option for the group by constituting the panel to work out an elaborate peace plan. But while that was on, the Ombati group in Nasarawa state struck, killing about 30 policemen and throwing the spanner into the amnesty works. This development, to all intents and purposes, has led to the declaration of the state of emergency as announced by the president. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, well, it just froze out there, but uh, you had the meat of it yesterday if you didn't. But that's what we're focusing on, and we're joined now by Professor Femi Odekunle, who is a criminologist. Good morning, and thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Well, yes, eventually you came, and then we had shades of opinion. Now some say, well, okay, good to go. Well, some uh, interesting aspect of that was that, well, the governors will stay, uh, emergency holds, uh, but it all goes up. But let's look at the whole broadcast itself, that declaration. How do you see it? Uh, <clears throat> to me, uh, that declaration is, is, is justified. It's a declaration of, uh, of war uh, in response to a declaration of war by the Arabs, uh, particularly in that sector, section of the country. Uh, and uh, unlike Dori Obasanjo regime, it does not involve the uh, dissolution of the state uh, houses of assembly. It does not involve the uh, decapitation of the office of the governor. It does not affect local government operations, just matters of security and matters of perhaps uh, uh, potential abrogation of certain human rights uh, uh, as uh, demanded <coughs> when you declare a state of emergency. And like I said, what has been going on amounts to a declaration of war. Now, I'm not going to whether the declaration of war by whoever is justified or not justified. These are uh, political, social, economic matters. But I'm saying that as a state, the government uh, has the right to respond uh, to the declaration of war by declaring counter war to do who is actually in charge. Uh, the only thing that I do not understand, we have, and we have to wait for the details, because this indeed appears to be evolving. There will be commentary by the National Assembly. There will be other consultations, more than uh, the one that led to his decision to declare the system in those three states. Uh, <clears throat> somebody will be, someone will be able to comment uh, in more detail after we actually get to the rudiments. The, but my first reaction is, first, it's a justified declaration in response to those who have declared war. Uh, secondly, is that I thought there must be some criteria for declaring a state of emergency in any part of the country. 
and I was thinking for more indications, why is Kanu, for example, excluded? Because Kanu had uh, suffered in terms of uh, quantum and quality of uh, terrorist, uh, terrorist damage, like those others. I can understand why uh, place, other places where there are problems have been excluded. But Kano seems to me, in my own opinion, in my, in my considered opinion, uh, Kano seems as qualified as those others to be covered by the so in terms system. of the frequency of in terms of the frequency and the, and the damage and the seriousness. I mean, remember, it's the place where they even went uh, uh, almost killing the, the, the arrived Emma. It's a place where innocent people by the uh, bus stations were just uh, uh, killed out, uh, bombed out of existence. So I'm saying that over time, when we get uh, uh, settled down, who are likely to raise questions? Why are some included and others not? Uh, 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 why are some included or others excluded? And uh, <coughs> to start with, it occurs to me why is Kano not qualified? Is there considerations of uh, uh, political uh, power? Is there consideration of cultural, religious, uh, uh, sacred cowness? Uh, what would they call secret cow? I mean, I'm trying to uh, formulate my own uh, grammar here. <laughs> Why is Kano excluded? Well, it's a big question you just asked so yeah. because uh, I think uh, maybe perhaps uh, this is the first time people are getting to uh, have a rethink and say, wait a minute, we have seen this uh, amount of uh, violence in Kano yes. and uh, uh, of a great uh, frequency. So why was Kano excluded? But again, some are also asking, even though it's just recently, perhaps maybe you should give us uh, an idea of how some, some of these things work. Uh, some are also asking that, uh, well, they thought Nasser was going to be included in all of this. <coughs> uh, remember, I raised this issue. Uh, when governments, governments have to take decisions on the basis of reasoning, uh, on the basis of certain parameters, uh, which could be defensible uh, and even could be justified. Uh, if you consider those, initi automatically you believe that those three states are qualified and Kado should be included. But a place like Masarawa will not be qualified. Uh, Plateau will not be qualified. Uh, Anambra, where you had the 50 people floating on the, <laughs> on the river, will not be qualified. Uh, what about uh, 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 TVs and Jukus? What about uh, Jukuns and uh, Ausas? Uh, what about uh, what about Bauchi? So I'm saying Nasara will not be uh, qualified. In fact, in the case of Nasarawa, it is not as if there is any proven or obvious for now connection between the uh, the Boko Haramis uh, that are apparently Islamic and the uh, Umbase, uh, apparently uh, uh, traditional uh, in terms of their spiritual orientation. So. Uh, that's why, and that incident seems to be uh, of recent. That is that of uh, the situation in Nasawa State. Uh, and perhaps the uh, other solutions will be more uh, palatable to that area than the declaration of emergency in that place. You know, yeah. okay. okay, all right. Have you tried, uh, as a criminologist, uh, have you tried to uh, study or unravel, try to decipher? The, the mode of living, when you talk about spirituality now of the Ambassy people and those in Nasara State, have you tried to see what must have transpired within that particular locality? Okay. <clears throat> the problem of a uh, television interview is that uh, it is more with some bites than uh, deep analysis. Uh, I would not like to uh, isolate the Nasara situation uh, for analysis, you have to put it in the context. You have to, you, you, as it were, you have to begin from the beginning. <clears throat> and when you put something in context, it enhances understanding. And the context I would like to put uh, the natural situation is that uh, <clears throat> it's just another variation of the uh, uh, problem and pattern of criminality and insecurity in the country in the last 10 to 15 years. What am I trying to say? I will get back to your question, but I want to put it in context. Uh, <clears throat> there is no society in this world that is totally secure or insecure. We talk about continuum of, uh, uh, of security of nations, uh, those that are most secure and least secure. Uh, on that continuum, you can place a country like Sweden, uh, 